welcome to the online classes of Uttar Pradesh Rashtriya and Open University. We are looking at the series of research methodology which has been taught in MCOM and MBA. In MCOM, it has been taught in the paper 112 and in MBA, it has been taken in the paper 2.6. Today, we are going to take an important topic that is known as sampling. Now, sampling, as you all know, is the core of any of the research because whatever analysis, whatever inferences you are going to take out, it is on the basis of sample. Now, what is sampling? Sampling indicates the selection of a part of a group or an aggregate with a view to obtain the information about the whole. Means here, you are going to select certain parameters. You are going to select certain things from the whole universe. And on the whole, you are going to apply that after having analysis. Now you see over here, this is our target population. If you are going to do any research, you have got a target population where you are going to conduct your research. The area of the study is very important. So if you say that your area of the study is Prayagraj, so these are the people who are living in the Prayagraj. But the population of Prayagraj in city only, it is more than 15 lakhs. You are not able to go and collect the data from all the 15 lakh people. So here what you are going to take, you are going to take the sample. Sample means selecting certain people from here and taking the data and on the basis of that data you are going to apply on the whole target population. This is all sample is all. Means out of all the things, the values, you are selecting certain values and you are applying it. Now need of sampling. Why we need sampling? The first and the most foremost important is sampling saves time. The data can be collected and summarized more quickly with a sample than a complete count of a whole population. Here, when you are going to take the data of the whole population, it will be a time-taking process. It will take a lot of time because, as I have told you, that if you are going to conduct a study in the area of Prayagraj, automatically it is very difficult to collect the data of all 15 lakh people. So, you are going to select certain sample. So, the most and foremost need of sampling is that it saves time of a researcher. Second, in case of infinity population, sampling is the only method for statistical analysis. Sometimes you don't know that what is the population. If you say that number of people who are being affected by COVID, the population you cannot assess because some of them are being registered in the government site, some of them are not. So it might be that in the whole world there are infinity, the population is infinity, the people who are being affected by the COVID. But the need for sampling is this, that you select some of the people who are being affected by the COVID and on the basis of that you take out the inferences and apply for your study. Sampling reduces the cost of experiment because only a few selected items are studied in the sampling. The cost of research also declines if you take a proper sample selection. Sampling helps to get the best outcome in a cheapest method. Now, essentials of sampling. Now, what are the important why sampling is essential for any of the research? A researcher must know that sample selection is the core or the backbone of any research. So the first one is it must be representative, means the sample selected should possess similar characteristics to the original universe from which it has to be drawn. Means whatever sample you are going to take should have a universal characteristics from the universe as a whole. If you are going to conduct a study on the people who are smoking, who smokes. So automatically your sample should be also of the people who used to smoke. If you are going to study on the people who are eating rice, your sample must contain the people who are smoking rice. So all these things are being considered whenever you have to take the sample means it must be a representative. Second one is homogeneity. Selected samples from the universe should have similar nature and should not have any difference when compared with the universe. Means the sample you have taken 
and the universe should be seen. There will be no difference between the sample size and the universe. The characteristics which is being determined in your sample should always be equal to the characteristics which is determined by the universe as a whole. Right? Third one, adequate sample. In order to have more reliable and representative result, a good number of items are to be included in the sample. The sample size matters a lot. What is the appropriate sample size? It's a big question. Whether you are going to take 1,000 sample, whether you are going to take 5,000 sample, whether you are going to take 5, 10 sample, how many samples you are going to take? It's a matter of big question. So, as far as the statistical methods has been required, we used to take the 5% of the whole universe. Because 5% in social sciences is being considered the best sample size. Optimization. Now, optimization is also very important for any sample. All efforts should be made to get maximum results both in terms of cost as well as in efficiency. Means, optimization of the result is very important as far as cost is being concerned or as far as being efficiency is being concerned. Both, both systems should be considered and optimum utilization of the resources should be done on sampling. If the size of the sample is larger, there is a better efficiency and at the same time the cost is more. A proper size of the sample is maintained in order to have optimized result in terms of cost and efficiency. Means the more sample you are going to collect, the cost of the research is going to increase. So there must be a balance between the sample selection and the cost. Means the appropriate value of the sample selection should be considered for a proper and a good and an effective study. Now criteria for good sampling. What are the criteria for a good sampling? If you are going to select a sample, what you are going to find in a good sample? The first one is selected sample from the population should be homogeneous. Means all the characteristics which your sample has must possess in the universe and should not have any difference when compared with the population. Means the universal population should have all the characteristics which your sample population have. Okay, so whatever parameter you have taken for your study, you must have to consider that while selecting a sample, these parameter must be contained in your sample size. Reasonable number of items is to be included in the sample to make the result more reliable. Reliability of the result is very important. The more the sample size is, the effective and more transparent the result is. Right? Third point, the selected sample should have the similar characteristics as the original population from which it has been selected. From where you have taken the sample, what are the characteristics that a sample possesses? Means there must be a reasonable homogeneity between the sample size and your universe. There will be no difference between the sample and the universe. Right? Now the next one, the individual items comprising the sample should be independent to each other. Means each of the sample should have got an independent identity. If you are going to conduct a study on the consumer behavior of students of India, every student is an independent personality. If you are going to conduct a study on the consumer behavior of Indian banking system, every consumer of Indian bank has a different personality. So, independence characteristics of each and individual is very important in this sample. The number of observation included in a sample should more to make the result more reliable. Means, the characteristics, the number of sample, the more the sample, the more effective will be the result. The more reliable will be the result as a whole. Now, advantages of sampling. As you all know, if we don't have what advantage of sample, we are not going to take the sample. 
there are various numerous advantages of sampling. The first one is cost effective. If you are going to do a research on analytical study of human resource management in the Indian software industry, so a person has to go to different cities where IT industries is. You have to select all the people who are working in the IT companies. Individually, you have to go and collect the sample. You have to collect the data by the help of questionnaire or by the help of schedule. It's a time-taking process. It needs time. It needs amount of money. So, by the help of sampling, the method is cheaper than the census research because only a fraction of the population is studied in this method. Here what we used to do is this, that from the whole population, when we conduct, when the government of India conducts census, each and every individual, the data of each and every individual citizen is being counted over there. But when we take sample, we say that out of this much of people, we are going to take 5%. Out of 15,000, we are going to take 5% of the 15,000. So that will be a sam sample size and it is will be a cost effective method. Time saving. There is a saving in time not only in conducting the sample inquiry but also in the decision making process. By sampling, we used to save a lot of time. Why? Because here, inquiry system, the data which we are going to collect is easier quick response we are going to get and on the basis of that responses we are able to collect a good inferences, a good result. Testing of accuracy, reliability test, accuracy test. So by the help of testing of an accuracy of sample drawn can be made by comparing two or more samples. Whether our sample is good or not, whether it is reliable or not, we used to conduct test of reliability. And on the basis of test of reliability, when our test is up to the mark, we used to say that our sample selection is proper. Detailed research is possible. If we collect a very good sample, means a sample which is highly representative of the whole universe, automatically whatever inferences we are going to draw on is applicable to the whole population. Reliability. If samples are taken in proper size, and on proper grounds, the result of sampling will be almost the same which might have been obtained by census methods. Means, if the parameters you have followed and you have taken all the parameters for a good sample, automatically your sample will be absolute accurate and the findings will be highly reliable to the whole population as a whole. Exclusive methods in many circumstances. In some cases, it is very difficult to count or to take the whole universe. So when it is very difficult for a researcher to select a universe, in that case, sampling used to be the best alternative. Because by the help of sample, a researcher used to collect his data and used to get the inferences by the help of different statistical tools. Where the population is infinite, then the sampling method is the only method of effective research. Also, if the population is perishable or testing units are destructive, then we have to complete our research only through sampling. Example, estimation of expiry dates of the medicines. Means, whenever we used to see that our research, our sample size is destructive in nature, it is being here, seasonal research, as soon as the season changes, automatically the sample is going to be changed. So for this, sampling is the best method. Then administrative convenience. Administrative convenience means in research, the organization and the administration of sample survey are easy for the reason which have been discussed here. All the research which you are going to conduct is for the welfare of the organization or for the welfare of the administration as a whole. So, whenever you are going to conduct any research, the organization or the people or the stakeholders who are directly or indirectly being affected should be taken into consideration. The best and the effective method of getting a good research is the selection of the best sample. Then, more scientific. 
Since the method used to collect data are based on scientific theory and results obtained can be tested, sampling is more scientific method of collecting data. Here, by the help of sampling, the accuracy is being maintained, means the data which you are going to take. On the basis of that data, you are going to test your hypothesis. So, the best sample leads to the best accurate result. Clear? Now, types of sampling. It is one of the most important topic. Why? Because sampling from where you are going to collect the sample is very important. There are different methods given in the various numerous books which we used to take while collection of the sample. So, whenever you are going to take out the sample, there are two common methods of taking the sample. The first method is probability sampling method. This probability means the chances of occurring of an event or the chances of non-occurring of an event is known. All the methods taken over here, this side, are based on probability sampling methods. Here, it is a scientific method, it is a calculative method, whatever sample you are going to select, there are certain parameters on which you are going to collect that sample. The first one is simple random sampling. Clear? Simple random sampling. If you have got say nine people and you have to take out a sample of simple random sampling. So you take like this, one, this is simple random sampling. Or you go with this, this is simple random sampling. Nothing, it is one of the simple method. The only thing is this, that you have to select the parameters on the basis of the parameters you have set. Second is cluster sampling. Cluster sampling is a method where you have got a sample of 5,000 and 10,000, you make a cluster over here, you have got So here you can see, in each cluster we have placed three, three units, right? So here we make clusters. This is one cluster, this is second cluster, this is third cluster, this is fourth cluster, this is fifth cluster. So here a researcher used to select any cluster and conduct his study. This is known as the cluster sampling. Then systematic sampling. Systematic sampling means here also you have certain numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Systematic sampling means you have to follow a systematic pattern while collecting your sample size. If you say you will take the first one and after the first one, every third will be our sample size. Every third means one, two, three. This is one, two, three. This will be our sample size. One, two, three. This will be our sample size. One, two, three. This will be our sample size. 1, 2, 3, this will be the sample size. 1, 2, 3, this will be the sample size. 1, 2, 3, this will be the sample size. Means the numbers which I have made circle is going to be selected in your sample. This is a systematic sampling method. Then, a stratified random sampling. A stratified means here what you are going to do, you are going to make certain strata. 
okay means you divide the city into this part so there are different strata and out of this strata you say i will collect the data from here and i will collect the data from here this portion means all the people who are living in this area in this strata will be our sample size clear so this is the fourth method so in first method it is simple random sampling where we are going to collect the data from a simple method then cluster we are going to have a cluster we select a simple cluster over here and we say this is our sample size systematic sampling we say that this is our sample size and every third person will be a sample this is systematic sampling stratified sampling we take the whole population we divide that population into strata and we say that this two strata if you say a b c d e f g h then your c and h will be your sample clear so this is a probability sampling method it is a scientific method by which you are going to collect your sample means here the number of occurring of an event and number of non occurring of an event is being known by the researcher the second method is non probability sampling method here there is no absolute way of collecting the sample here you can collect sample on your convenience the first method is the convenience sampling means a researcher used to go out if you say that all the students who are studying maths will be our sample size so you go out and all the students who are studying maths will be in your considered as a sample no need of considering board up board icc board cbsc board nothing anyone who is studying math will be your sample size the best and the easiest method second one is non probability sampling here also we are going to collect a sample but non probability means anyone if the area of the study is uttar pradesh we are in allahabad we will take the sample in allahabad we are in fazabad we will take the sample from fazabad if we are in gonda we will take the sample of gonda if we are in varanasi we will take the sample of varanasi if we are in ghaziabad we are going to take the sample of ghaziabad same way if we are in jaipur and conducting the study of the whole country and we are in jaipur we are going to take the sample from jaipur means there is no universal affected adopted method for this non probability sampling then it is a snowball sampling sometimes a researcher doesn't know that what will be his sample size from where he is going to get the sample means very less is being known in that area of the study when the epidemic is started covid 19 started very few people know about the reasons why the covid is being spreading so far what are the symptoms but as the time goes on people are awareing more and more and more and more so here snowball sampling method is being used where a researcher knows very less about the study or very less about the sampling method here what the researcher used to do is this that again i used to say 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 12 so this is sample right so he has to select the sample so for example is doing certain study on the area of covid in the year 2020 2020 january 2020 he knows very less about the covid so this is the person who knows he lives in china and he knows more about the covid so the first sample size will be this right the searcher name is mr a 
So this is the first sample. And he will say that six knows somewhat more about the COVID. Then six will say that 12 knows some more about the COVID. 12 will say 14 knows. 14 will say 19 knows. Means all the people who have got the primary knowledge about the epidemic will be considered in our sample. There is no set parameter overlay. Just, just we have taken probability method. Means there is a specific way of selecting the sample. But here, one is telling that six knows, six is telling 12 knows, 12 is telling 14 knows, 14 is telling 19 knows. All the people who knows will be considered in our sample size. Then the last one is quota sampling. Quota means there are certain quota allotted to a certain organization, firms, and for considered that sample, we have to take the quota out of there. Right? For example, we have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? So, this is your sample size 12. And you say that out of this, 6, 10, 3, these three will be our quota of selection. Right? So out of this, we are going to conduct a study. So for the sampling methods, you have got four probability method and four non-probability sampling method. The four probability method where you have got specific parameters on the basis of which you are going to select your sample is simple random sampling, clustered sampling, systematic sampling, and stratified random sampling. And if you consider non-probability sampling method, the first one is convenient sampling, non-probability sampling, snowball sampling, and quota sampling. So these are the methods by which you can collect your sample, you can select your sample for a reliable, for a good study. Now, limitations of sampling. Why we used to take sample? We used to take the sample as it is a cost-effective method for our study. It is more effective method to take out the best result. But there is always being a certain limitations or disadvantages of any of the study which we are going to conduct. The first one is biased conclusion. If the sample has not been properly taken, then the data collected and the decisions on such data will lead to wrong conclusion. Means if you haven't have taken proper consideration, proper consideration is not being taken into account, then the result will lead to a biasness. You are going to get a wrong result. Samples are like medicines. They can be harmful when they are taken carelessly or without knowledge of their effects. Samples are just like medicines. If you are taking the wrong medicine, it will affect your body in a negative manner. Same way, the sample should have possessed all the characteristics which the universe has. And if the sample and universe has the same characteristics, the inferences you are going to derive will be very useful for the whole universe. Experienced researcher is required. An efficient sampling requires the service of qualified, skilled, and experienced personnel. In the absence of these, the result of their search will be biased. Means here, the researcher who is conducting the study should have all the KSAO levels. Now, KSO levels means, I said K S K represents knowledge, 
a researcher must have a knowledge about his topic that what you are going to conduct what results you are going to get find and according to that result what is the usefulness of that result for the society as a whole so he must have a proper knowledge about the topic then skills means the researcher must have a skill to take out the best sample to take out the best inferences whatever statistical tools he is going to apply is up to the mark means it must be a parametric or non parametric according to the sample size then ability how you are going to apply the statistical tools on your sample whether the sample the method by which you have collected the sample represents the whole universe or not so this requires a skill a better skilled researcher is always being appreciated by the society as a whole then other characteristics other characteristics means your behavior your attitude your ability your values this is also being considered if a researcher has got a very good value he is not going to play with the data he is not going to falsify the data he is not going to bungle with the data means he is going to conduct a transparent study so the first point says that the biased conclusion should be removed if you have got caso label and if the researcher is being experienced in third point not suited for heterogeneous population if you have got a heterogeneous population means the sample size and the population size differs in your universe there are different proportion of people who are living over there so it is very difficult that if you collect a data if you collect a sample from a heterogeneous population your sample will be wrong and when your sample is wrong your study will be wrong means your inferences will be wrong the decision the conclusions you are made is going to be wrong so whenever you have got heterogeneous population sampling is not suited over there sampling is only being applicable if the population is homogeneous a small population sampling method is not possible when the population size is too small means <laughs> if you are conducting a study on a very small sample population automatically the sampling method is not being considered over there if you are going to take a small sample means the small sample the small population is automatically seen clear then illusory conclusion if a sample inquiry is not carefully planned and executed the conclusion may be inaccurate and misleading means sometimes we used to the researcher used to create an illusion while taking out the inferences while doing different statistical tools while taking out the result he has a illusion in his mind and while drafting the decisions or while drafting the conclusions and suggestion this illusionary conclusion is harmful for the whole study it can mislead and it can result an inaccuracy in the whole study so here a researcher should always be very clear about his study sample not representative as i have told you that you always go with the probability methods of sampling because it's a scientific method of collection of data right so sometimes when we have got sample which is being not representative of the whole population whole universe then there is a problem to make the sample representative it is a difficult task if a representative sample is taken from the universe the result is applicable to the whole population if the sample is not representative to the universe the result may be false and misleading again if your population and your sample has got the same characteristics your result will be up to the mark but the characteristics of your sample is not same as of the population it will give a misleading inaccurate and ineffective result lack of experts as there are lack of experts to plan the conduct a sample survey its execution and analysis and its result would be unsatisfactory and not trustworthy means if a researcher lacks the expertise of analyzing the data 
the statistical tools he is going to apply. Which statistical tools he is going to apply? If you are conducting a correlative study, you have to apply the statistical tool that is known as correlation. So here the statistical tools, the application and the sample size is contradictory to each other. And if any one of the sampling method, the statistical tools or inferences is wrong, automatically it will lead to an unsatisfactory and an unsound result. Then conditions of complete coverage. If the information is required for each and every item of the universe, then a complete inversion of survey is better. Means the conditions which is being required to take out for the whole coverage, for the whole sample is very important. If a researcher used to miss a single component of a research, automatically the whole study will be affected, right? So these are certain limitations which we used to find when we take the sample for our study. The first one is biased conclusion. Second is experienced researcher is required. Third is not suited for heterogeneous population. Fourth is a small population. Fifth is individual conclusion. Sixth is sample not representative. Seventh is lack of expert. And eighth, conditions of complete coverages. So these are the limitations of the sample. So Whenever you are going to take the sample, we have to see that the sample should be in accordance with our population. The more, the best way of getting the best sample is this, that we have to see that the characteristics of the sample and the characteristics of the population should have a common and a same base. Whatever parameters you have framed for your study, you have to see that whatever parameters we have made and on the basis of that parameters we are going to select our population. And from that population, our sample size should be same as per the need of our study. I hope you have understood this topic. This will be very useful for the students of MCOM and MBA. Thank you.